Jill, I can see your eyes. <laughs> this is this is pretty much the the joys of video conferencing now, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, you thank you all. For, thank you all for joining me. Yes, I can. I can see your face now perfectly. That's great. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for joining in for this. I thought it'd be a, an interesting thing to try um, because we're all um, experiencing this pandemic from lots of different angles. Um, obviously, us as a software provider, we've got Jonathan Owen looking after a huge number of local councils. We've got Michelle doing the, <laughs> the same at the moment. And then we've got um, Jill as a clerk and Graham as a councillor on on the on the ground trying to to make this all work so i thought this would be a good a good example a good, a good opportunity to just have a discussion on it see what our experiences have been um see how also from jill and graham's point of view i'm really interested in seeing what um, your experiences have been also interacting with organizations like bhib like now and also like parish online so um that's it really. Shall we do introductions? Because we're, I've now started recording this, so this is live now. <laughs> we'll, we'll be live. Um, Jonathan, do you want to start with you? Yeah, hello everybody. I'm Jonathan Owen and I'm Chief Executive of the National Great. Um, lots of feedback there, but again, the joys of <laughs> virtual video conferencing. <laughs> Michelle. Hi. Hi. Uh, working for BHIB. Um, and my main concern at the moment is making sure that we give good quality advice to our councils through this extraordinary time. Great. Jill, you're top left on my screen. Okay, I'm Jill Wardle. I'm the parish clerk in Hindhead, which is a uh, small village uh, in South Somerset. And you've got a beautiful view behind you. That's a fantastic <laughs> so I, 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 I thought, view I thought I'd give you a nice bit of wisteria. It's pretty <laughs> <smell> <laughs> it as well. <laughs> and Graham. Graham, Graham feels quite horrified that you got a picture of his very unsophisticated library. <laughs> so um, I think I should be pointing out of the window at the tulips or something. Uh, I'm just a, a, a parish councillor in the little village of Long Sutton, which is a little larger than Fivehead, but is also in glorious Somerset. So Somerset is just way ahead on this count. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I was going to make a joke about I'm surprised you had internet connection, but um, I won't go there. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank, thanks for joining us. Um, Graham, your microphone is sometimes um, interrupting, so we might we might have to mute each other occasionally. Um, but it seems all, all right there. Um, and then just to introduce myself, my name is Chris Muse. Um, I'm the managing director of Geosphere, which is the company that um, looks after Parish Online. And so I've been working on this for 10 years or so now. Um, I'm actually an avid worker from home until recently when we set up an office. So I'm, I'm used to this kind of setup. Um, but yes, we've been working with town and parish councils and community councils for 10 years now, um, producing uh, digital mapping software and helping councils do their job. Um, Great. Introductions done. Tick. Um, Jonathan, I thought it'd be good to start with you, actually, because um, this has been an extremely busy time for you, hasn't it? And I, thank you for spending the time to join us today. My question really is what the big changes you've had to see in policy and um, the way councils are having to change their working behaviours in this pandemic situation. Is he still there? I forgot to unmute myself. 
<laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna play video conferencing bingo today. So that's the first one. You forgot to unmute yourself. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, I think it's been obviously a, a really horrid and uh, uh, an unpleasant time for for everybody. But what I've been really impressed by is how the 10,000 councils across England are really stepping up to the plate and are really trying to help their, their communities. So I think the changes really are probably less about policies and processes as such, but more about some of our best councils doing some really great things for their communities, setting up food banks, uh, setting up um, neighbourhood uh, liaison arrangements, emergency response groups to provide deliveries, collect prescriptions and that kind of thing. And we've collected about 200 case studies which are available on our website that identify all the great things that are happening. And they're not just happening in Somerset, they're happening all over the country. I live in Suffolk and my uh, town council set up emergency, started leafleting for an emergency response group within a few days of the crisis starting and they got something like 400 volunteers. And I think that what that illustrates is our councils have really been um, you know, quick out of the blocks and have really uh, worked hard to support their, their communities. Uh, what we've been doing nationally is trying to pump out as much advice and guidance to councils as possible and to try to lobby government to make sure that they make it easier for councils to do their, their job in supporting their communities. So I'm pleased that uh, the government agreed to allow our councils to hold meetings remotely and uh, many of them have already started uh, doing that using uh, a number of, of platforms uh, and uh, i guess the other uh, kind of big issue for us is is just making sure that uh, all our councils are able to access any additional funding that is necessary to compensate them maybe for lost income or indeed to, to support the work of community groups so i think you know despite this is a horrid time. I think there are some really encouraging things that are coming out of it in terms of rediscovering neighbourliness and uh, the importance of locality working and strong uh, community organisations, which I think parish and town councils are demonstrating that they are those strong community organisations. Mm, absolutely. And um, from our point of view, uh, providing a tool to local councils, we were really surprised at how um, early on, we started getting uh, um, questions and and queries about using the software that early on, like way before the lockdown. And in fact, like Jill, you were probably one of the first people to start um, using Parish Online and using, starting to adopt these tools for your planning ahead. Do you want to tell us a bit about how that came about and what your thought processes were for that? Uh, well, I think we, uh, we've been thinking about our emergency plan for a long time, but it's been quite difficult to sort of get the push to do it. And obviously we've had that now. Um, we're quite a small village, parish, about 250 houses, um, but we're quite dispersed. And whilst people do know each other, um, the, the sort of dispersion factor needed to be taken into account. So it was great to be able to use Parish Online to sort of develop uh, clusters of houses. And um, basically, the, they've got a maximum of 10 houses in each cluster. So they're quite small and self-contained. It's really and small. It's almost like a line of sight. Um, people sort of know each other by sight, if not by name or, or yeah. more. You haven't developed a flag system yet then. You can just put a flag out your window. <laughs> <laughs> work in some places but uh, yeah. I love it I, I come from a cartographic background and um, yeah. so I, I just love the whole uh, geospatial mapping and everything so it's great to be able to get my hands on it now. Mm. And uh, yeah yourself and um, some parishes actually in the Isle of Wight were, were very early on in, in starting to um, plot these things out and some were doing it as projects already um, where they were existing thought processes where they said right we're going to have to uh, it was actually off the back of a lot of the flooding from last year not in the Isle of Wight um, but they were going right we need to put some planning in place so that if this happens again we've got these kind of processes to you know enable these people these volunteers these staff and I think at that point that plan all of a sudden converted into a Covid plan <laughs> and yeah. And but it was a reusable thing, so that was that was really good to see. 
Um, I really hope we can use what we've done now and sort of develop it into a more all-embracing emergency plan mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah, no, that's really good. And so um, Jonathan mentioned the, the, the surge in response for volunteers and people uh, getting involved and looking after the community area. How have you seen that yourself in, in your area? Well, absolutely. So we've got 33 of these clusters and I've got a lead contact for each of those and they're all the people I know, which has made it easier and sort of safer as well um, mm. from my point of view. But I've also got another list of about 30 volunteers. So for shopping, getting prescriptions, walking dogs. And mm. the other really amazing thing is the number of sort of small businesses in the area that have really stepped up totally changed their game on what they're offering, um, a lot of delivery services. So uh, it's like you say, the whole community is coming together in a way that it hasn't perhaps for a long time. Yeah, it's amazing how quickly we can adapt, isn't it? Um, <laughs> when I've been doing my um, my exercise for the day, going out on the bike, um, there's a, a pub that most of the time I cycle to and occasionally veer off into the pub <laughs> garden of. Um, but they obviously they've shut down, um, but they've opened it up as a, a farm shop. So they've got a process where they've got local delivery people where they can bring bring local produce in and people can come and collect it, you know, in a very organised way. It's really good to see that. And yeah, it's really good to see that community spirit kicking in. Yeah. Um, how have you, um, this is just from my experience, how have you found the, um, the, not the conflict, conflict's the wrong word, but local councils I've seen have um, stepped up, like yourself, Jill, and um, like Jonathan was saying, many others around the country, they've stepped up and said, right, we can do this, we can help in the area. How does that, I'm going to use the word conflict, conflict with the NHS volunteer service, um, other local charities that already exist, I'm sensing there's a bit of an overlap with this. Um, and, and Jonathan, you might be able to help with this as well. How, how is that kind of being managed or, or is it at the moment? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I keep a washing brief on, on all the other um, interests. And uh, until recently, I was a trustee for the Community Council for Somerset. Mm. So uh, we've got the network of village agents in the area as well, across, well, across Somerset. So I'm sort of keeping an eye on that, interacting with them. Uh, but you're right, there's a lot of different initiatives going on. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's, it, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, because it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, having the resources and having like 750,000 NHS volunteers potentially on, on hand to help is great. But yeah. the logistics around managing that and uh, tasking those people is probably going to be very hard. And I still don't think I hope at the moment. Jonathan. I hope that it will get sorted out, out locally, really, as as Jill was kind of suggesting, I think. And, and I was talking to a, a small parish in Kent this morning uh, where the kind of volunteer group had been set up by a group of individuals through Facebook and not really talked to the parish council at all. But, but the parish council is now working with that group and is providing some funding for sanitising and transport costs and other things. So, so I think hopefully it, it will work. I think things work better on the ground, perhaps, and strategically. You know, the, the, there's lots of big initiatives announced nationally, aren't they? But I'm not sure they're necessarily all completely thought through or, or joined up. But I think that joining up is happening at a community level. Yeah. So maybe the local councils are that hub, you know, so where it, it can be formalised, potentially. Yeah, indeed. OK, no, that's really interesting. Um, so, um, Jill, your yeah. background on using Parish I say your cart cartographic mind, that's that's really good to hear, that's that's why we got you on the call. <laughs> um, you're, uh, you started off with Parish and I naturally through BHIB, is that that's right, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It was, well, we were very interested in it and um, we were interested to see whether our district council would actually sign up. Um, mm. But meanwhile, it was great that BHIB, who we have our insurance with, um, came up with the deal. So that's been fantastic. And we've certainly used it a lot for planning applications, uh, which we have a lot at the moment. 
um, and also the sort of uh, walks that we've been mapping out and SSSIs, nature reserves and things. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's great to have free access to it. So thank you. Fantastic. Good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic. What's, what's it been like from your perspective, Michelle, um, in this time? Because it's a busy time for you anyway, you know, um, working with PAC councils. But, you know, adding this on top, it must be mad. <laughs> Yeah, it, it has been incredibly busy and I think very early on from the start of um, the, the outbreak, people reached out to us, which is wonderful. That's what we're there for. We want to be seen as, as a go to repository for, for knowledge. So anything insurance and, and risk management related has been fantastic. The interaction. Um, the main thing that we started queries on was working from home. We saw a huge uptick in people taking laptops and computer equipment home. Councils just want to do the right thing and make sure they've got the right cover. So we were there to say, yeah, it's all covered. Working from home, the remote working is is all in as part of the policy. The next big query that came along was for volunteers. So are volunteers covered um, and how how can we manage them? How do we risk assess them? Could we get sued if one of them gets the, the virus? Um, so lots and lots of worries and queries which we've been able to provide guidance on and simple things like once you've got your volunteer workforce, um, are they OK to use their own vehicles to deliver medicines and supplies to villagers? So lots of things that you perhaps wouldn't think um, were too insurance related where our councils have reached out to us and we've been trying to keep our website updated with lots of the queries and putting them on as, as blogs and frequently asked questions to try and help councils across the country with the queries that they've got because they really do want to do the right thing. Uh, mm. One of the other things that we found was the closure of playgrounds has been huge, you know, trying to keep children and people out of playgrounds and gym equipment when it's not necessarily fenced off was quite a big worry for lots and lots of councils. Um, so we've, we've posted them to notices that have been provided um, and they were able to take pictures. And of course, if they're using Parish Online and the asset register, they can upload that picture as a demonstration of their risk management measures um, and, and then upload inspections. So the fact that we've been working with Parish Online uh, throughout this, uh, it's just fantastic and to hear some of the wonderful, wonderful stories of how people have been rallying around in their local communities really is very heartwarming. So, yeah, mm. a long way that continue long after yeah, this. <laughs> and and Graham, you're you're new to Par you're new to Parish Online, aren't you? As as such, so um, have you been using it for any COVID work recently, or what's your um, your angle been? Well, the chairman of our parish council is a, a master of delegation, so he decided very early on that everything would be coordinated in the emergency response field by the WI. So that was a very adroit move in that he passed all the workload to somebody else. Uh, but then it became very helpful for them for us to produce an address list of every house in the area. So um, discovering how to do that was you know, something for a new, a new person to learn, and that was great. And then another village decided that they were going to do everything um, in a WhatsApp group. Uh, but then they discovered that uh, although people knew everybody's names, they had no idea necessarily where they lived, a bit like sort of five heads issue that people were spread out. So we had to produce, uh, or rather we were very much um, pleased to be able to give them a map of their village with all the addresses of every house on, um, which was an interesting sort of exercise in producing uh, four or five PDF files and then literally cutting and pasting them together in the old fashioned way so they could hang it up on the wall and say, this is where Rose Cottage is. Uh, so that was great. Um, and then you very, in a very timely fashion, I think, produced a tutorial on styles and so forth. And that was I found very useful in setting up uh, the addresses of all the houses that needed help. And then they were all in sort of red blobs, if you like. And then when you assign someone to look after them, they changed to green. So it became very simple for an administrator to say, oh, well, we don't have any coverage for that person, but the rest of the world is covered. And then if someone, a volunteer, dropped out because of COVID-19, then again, his 
globs all turned to red and you immediately knew who to um, go and help out as, as well. So very useful from that point of view. But uh, it was it was the delegation to the WI, which was the, the big success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you've um, have you dished out different user accounts to those those people so they can connect into Parish Online? How have you approached that? Oh, we have, yes. Well, certainly the people um, in, in Knoll, those little villages down the, the road, they've all got read-only accounts. Um, and they seem to be making quite active use of, of, of it. And, and uh, so far, all the feedback has been extremely responsive, very, very interested people. That's great. That's great. And you, you have, you've had some interesting experiences with going from uh, physical meetings to remote meetings. I know it's a big topic at the moment in local council world with how we actually take on a meeting. How have you been finding it, Graham? Well, it's um, I'm the treasurer of the local council, um, the village hall, and also on the parochial church commission. And the parochial church commission decided that they were going to try and um, work out how uh, video conferencing worked. And the vicar said it was the biggest laugh she's had in the two decades that she's been here. So it was hilarious. Um, just people getting used to the fact that if they burst out laughing, they cut out the phone, you know, the, the sound for everybody else. And then everyone's saying, well, who's that? What's that? Great stuff. So um, <clears throat> uh, surprisingly, video conferencing has been a source of vast amounts of wit uh, and, and enjoyment. Um, the parish council uh, was one of those ones that decided that um, because we are operating under laws that were regulations that were written long before anybody envisaged the internet or indeed a pandemic, they, they felt that they had to have a physical meeting in order to decide to be allowed to have online meetings. Mm. So um, the village hall committee, which is not necessarily staffed by the parish council, said, well, you're very welcome to um, have the, the venue of the hall as your uh, meeting place, but you're not allowed to go in because it's been locked down in accordance with government instructions. So if you want to stand around in the car park and, and stand two meters from everybody and hold your conversation, go ahead. Uh, so that was entertaining in a way. And I, to this day, I have no idea whether that meeting took place. Um, I opted out on the grounds that uh, we were under self uh, what's the word? So, um, self-isolation. Uh, that's the word, like, well, yes. Uh, we were under self-isolation um, because we weren't quite sure with whom the children had interacted at university. So when they came home, everybody stopped for the next two weeks. Yeah. So I was um, had the great opportunity to be extremely virtuous and say, I wish to have it recorded on the minutes of this meeting that um, I deliberately did not show up in accordance with government instructions. That was very popular. I'm now a huge hero. Particularly <laughs> <laughs> so, amongst the parish members who did show up. I can imagine we it, heard of, a, a, of councils in Cornwall that, uh, right at the beginning of it, um, held meetings in car parks. So they drove to a car park, uh, wound down their windows, and agreed various delegations to the clerk and chair of the parish. So I think people have been finding all sorts of ways to get around all this uh, this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we had one on the village green. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> so you're not still doing that? Though? Have you gone to video calling now or are you um, still? I, 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 I'm just trying to get that organised and agreed to. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because it, it's been a bit of a clamber, really, hasn't it? Um, it's, well, take take this call, for example. We're all used to different methods of doing it whether it's for personal just in the last few weeks we've found a, a product or a, a piece of technology that works for us and we've kind of stuck with it um, and there's very difficult to get that interaction between them and um, getting everyone connected into the same call I mean teams today we're doing this on teams and it's decided it doesn't want to see Jonathan's face and that's very offensive but you know that's the way that's the way it's worked out um yeah great well um yeah so jonathan i suppose it's uh, uh very tricky to keep up with all the guidance on on this and how you communicate that to to councils because it's changing so fast um 
I know you've got um, stuff on the website. So how, how are you managing that as a virtual team yourself, also trying to bring all of that information together? Might be well, we, we moved to home working probably a week before the lockdown. We, we thought things were going to get uh you know get get worse really and so we thought we would try it a week beforehand just to see if we could iron out any <clears throat> any problems um and since then we've been having regular uh, meetings over zoom is a product we we use uh and we set up a coronavirus web page which has had something like a hundred thousand hits since it was set up which is which is a wow. huge number and in fact someone told me today it's average it's getting about ten thousand hits a day on average uh, which I think I might need to check the veracity of that, but um, nevertheless, it's it's uh, it's um, hugely uh, well uh, used. Uh, we update, we try to update it as as often as we can, often daily. Uh, certainly in the early stages when things were was, were coming through, um, you know, really really quickly, and and policies changing quite rapidly as well. Uh, mm. Things are stabilising a bit now, but we we try to make sure that we get out all the HR advice, some advice on. Uh, how to do remote working, uh, remote meetings, and any government announcements about um, changes in regulations and that kind of thing. So hopefully that's been really useful to our councils across the country to help them uh, to get on and help their communities. Mm. And do you see this as a, um, in every crisis, as an opportunity? Do you see this as an opportunity for modernisation within local councils in some of the processes? um like like how you conduct meetings do you think this is going to be an opportunity to to change and to change policy i certainly hope so i i i think as as um you know graham was saying our, a lot of our the legislation for our sector goes back you know hundreds of years almost so a, a decent dose of modernization would be a good thing but you know i don't think we're ever going to go back to normal are we there's going to have to be a new normal and people are going to be working working very differently and hopefully communities will be uh, working and changing uh, uh, as well and you know I'd like to see uh, on the back of this that we harness some of the volunteering volunteers that have come forward and get them involved in other kind of community activities including mm. perhaps on councils one of the lessons I guess with this is uh, our sector the average age of a councillor is 61 so uh, you know it's, it's a sector that that potentially is, is hit quite significantly by uh the coronavirus so um mm. you know ag again maybe that would be a spur to get people from different ages and, and different backgrounds involved as well which would be a good thing yeah i mean um we have experience of that from uh, offering parish online over the years um we've had anecdotal evidence from clark saying oh well i i haven't really got time to use this i see the benefit in it but i've i've given it to one of my staff who's much younger and more competent at computers than I am you know, that's the kind of thing we hear and start doing really good things with it and that information actually filters up to the clerks and the councillors who would have normally avoided looking at it and go oh, okay well it's not that hard it's it's really powerful and you get to see the benefit of it um, so yeah that move towards new technologies and um, new ways of working could be really interesting time for local councils. And I think we're going to see that in, in training as well. A lot of our county associations uh, rely on uh, training courses for, for some of their income, uh, mm. which obviously is in danger of dropping off, but many of them are now moving to online um, uh, training packages. Uh, initially, everybody's a bit cautious and concerned and worried, but after they've tried it a couple of times, they find, find it works really well. And hopefully that'll be a, another way we can get more councillors to get uh, fully trained in a whole raft of things, whether it's parish online or other stuff, you know, maybe days of sort of um, chalk and talk in a, in a village hall will perhaps be replaced by people accessing information on, on their iPad or telephone or whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. And even moving towards uh, self-service kind of training as well, um, like the similar sessions that we've done that Graham mentioned where we were doing online tutorials, they're, they're out there for people to see and use whenever they want. We don't have to physically drive out to someone and sit down with them. You can get just as much engagement sat where you are um, without using any petrol or diesel and and get the same experience or very similar experience at least. And, and Plus, there's another advantage which I've 
notice that this average age you mentioned of 61 means that memory is not quite what it used to be back in the old days. So that the advantage of a webinar is you can stop and think about what they said and then say, I don't understand that and go back and listen to it again <clears throat> and again and again. And again, on, on, on my videos go. <laughs> yeah, you're no, right. it's not it's not the delivery, it's the reception, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Jill, do you um are you the, the vanguard of the um of technology in your parish or do you have um other people working with you? Um we, we've had a great guy who's been doing the website for us for many years, but uh we because of the accessibility changes, we've just had it redone. Um, so I now seem to be the webmaster as well. Um, huh? So uh, I, I'm struggling a little bit with that um, when we get very technical. Um, also do the Facebook page um, and we have a village email system. And so, yeah, there's, I think I could spend 110 percent of my time actually communicating at the moment. Um, and it, it's like Jonathan says, I mean, they've got so much stuff on the NALC site now. Um, and every day I'm sort of looking at it and thinking, oh, I should be sharing this, you know, and, and uh, there's, there's just so much good stuff out there. Yeah. I really love the um, NALC. Uh, they did a sort of uh, virtual uh, Zoom meeting of a, an imaginary parish council, um, which was really, I watched that yesterday. That was really useful, actually. How a parish council should uh, should run through. <laughs> Great. So you're about ninety thousand of those hundred thousand hits then on the now. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and Michelle, is it affecting? How's it affecting your industry as well? Oh, Michelle, we can't hear you. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We'll cut that yeah. out, don't worry. <laughs> cut that out. Um, my <laughs> competence, cut that out. Um, so you may have seen in the press that our industry is getting uh, a little bit of a bad rap at the moment, I think. Um, lots of people expected their insurance policy to actually cover uh, business interruption claims for COVID-19, loss of earnings. Mm. Um, I think you'll have probably all seen the Hiscox article that's doing the rounds. Now you've got Raymond Blanc on there um, where there's some ambiguity over wording and insurers are saying the intention was never to cover a pandemic. There's specific insurance for pandemic, which is incredibly expensive. Um, and uh, But there are some loopholes in some business interruption wordings which have, have meant that there is ambiguity. Um, so I think there is a huge expectation for the insurance industry to just foot the bill and pay, um, which is a real shame because the, the cover where it's intended to be will should and will pay out. But mm. there's um, there's a lot of, of interpretation um, and disappointment, I guess, that people haven't got the cover when perhaps they thought um, that they should. So mm. we're quite concerned from a reputational perspective now and are working very hard with clients. Um, we stand by our clients and we're getting advice for them and legal advice if required to help them defend if we think there is ambiguity and case for paying a claim out. Um, but I don't think we're going to come out of this um, as a very shiny industry, unfortunately, mm. which is why I want to work with individual customers and councils to provide all the help and advice that we can at this time. Um, to, to try and help because we realise some of the financial losses are significant and I was absolutely delighted to hear the additional funding that was announced by the government at the weekend so that the valuable services can continue. So, um, yeah, it's been a very difficult time. We've had some very irate customers on the phone to deal with, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just from the content that I've seen through social media and what BHIB Councils Insurance has been putting out, you're you're being proactive about it though aren't you you're you're putting that information out and you know customers like Jill will be able to receive that and and see that you're working hard on it um yeah as soon as a uh um, we're a BHIB customer as well actually and you know, <laughs> you are indeed. do our insurance through it as well um you know it's good to see that that's that's there's that interaction at least you could you could have just sat back and let it all happen but you know you're you're going out and you're publishing content and advice and that's I imagine that's really appreciated. I hope so. Yeah, I do hope so. 
We've certainly changed how our operations work in Parish Online. We've gone from the office, a, a really long five minute walk from my house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> terrible commute. Um, yeah, we've, we've gone to a remote office now. Um, so we've just had to slightly adapt how we're doing our software development, uh, our map updates and, and our support as well. Um, so I've informally gone to um, well, we've gone to a, a seven day support day now. So we normally just so any access our emails or the support emails during the week, but we've switched on our um, phone notifications as well now. So when those emails come in, we can more quickly get back to the parishes who might need to do something over the weekend because the the concept of a working week now is slightly dissolved. <laughs> now that we can't go anywhere, I find myself back at my computer. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, but yeah, we've, we've started to um, change that. So we've been answering support on email the, uh, at the weekend. And the usage of Parish Online, we've seen gone up as well. Um, so there's obviously a lot of people sort of focusing on what tools can I use to get something done. And so it's nice to see that that's that's um, working well. And it's we've had some really nice feedback, which is really nice to hear. Um, and we've also, one of the other things we've done is we've extended our free trial period um, from the normal 30 day trial to a 90 day trial. So you get three months worth of free parish online to go and use it fully featured without having to pay a single penny because we thought that was the right thing to do. We saw very early on that people like um, Jill and Graham are utilising the software. OK, we want to help. How can we help? Well, we've got a, a paywall in front of our product. So let's get rid of that paywall for a um, short period of time, <laughs> but an extended period of time so that it can be used for, for these purposes and, and get communities working. Um, so that seems to have gone down really well. We've got lots of people taking up that offer, which is really nice to see. Um, we got some abuse on Twitter for saying that we are cashing in on a pandemic, um, but we're not cashing in because it's free. But there we go. You can never please everyone. Um, so we've got another. So where we are, we've got another two and a half weeks of lockdown minimum. Um, so how do you think the next few weeks are going to play out for, for all of you? Jill, Jill, what's next on your on your list at the moment? Um, oh, it's a very long list. Um, I think the annual accounts and audit all need sorting out. So um, I think that's going to be a bit of a, a remote audit. Uh, the guy only lives about half a mile away, but I think we're going to do that digitally. Um, hmm. So that should be fine. Um, I really want to do the asset register and everything else online. And I don't know if you remember, I've got those parish walks plotted mm. out on Parish Online. So we use the software there and the aerial photography and the ordnance survey mapping to map out some parish walks. And we're going to do some leaflets and put it on the website. And um, mm. within the current restrict, uh, government restrictions, um, I think I'm going to try and get them out there for people to do a bit of ground truthing with some of the walks and write some descriptions for me and take some photographs. So uh, uh, really keen to get on with that. Um, but the, the audit keeps coming back to me and whispering <laughs> in my ear at the moment. So another than that, it's the day to day answering the questions, keeping it mm. running. And Parish Online isn't meant to be fun, Jill. It's not meant to be a fun tool. It's a serious tool. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's great. Ours, ours are fun. <laughs> great. Graham, what about you? Graham, what about you? I, I think that um, I'm not sure how much has sunk in yet that uh, the new normal that Jonathan was referring to is going to affect people. I suspect that there's a hope that the lockdown will be lifted and everything will go back to as it used to be. But I suspect that the experiences that we're seeing in those countries which are coming out of their lockdown period. Singapore, for instance, has had to shut down again because they've got a new wave of the approach. And I suspect we're going to see a lot of that. So 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're um, being very wary of COVID-19 right until the entire country has been vaccinated, and that's at least a year away. So I, I think we're going to be living with um, the consequences. Plus, I think there's going to be quite a lot of people who say, actually, I quite enjoy working from home and not having to travel into the, the, the parish council meeting. Let's do it all online in future. Mm. Um, I used to do a lot of, uh, of breakfast networking and was chatting to someone this morning on a call um, about the fact that that's all moved online. He says, yes, he said, why would I want to drive for 30 minutes through the rain and the snow to have a rather a bad breakfast with a bunch of evil smelling people when I can sit at home and have a breakfast? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I, I think there'll be quite a change um, in that people who've been forced to use the technology will actually find it. This is not bad, actually. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think there's going to be a huge uh, task of educating that um, certainly uh, NALC and all the individual county um, ALCs, if that's the right word for them, um, can demonstrate just how useful it can be to do things online, including particularly their um, asset registers and all the things that Jill is saying you've got to do. Why not do them in the uh, nice, convenient place that's fun mm -hmm. as well? Um, so I, I suspect there'll be quite a lot of uh, training and the webinars that you were speaking about, you know, people don't have to get together any longer to have the training sessions that the ALKS, is that the right word, the ALKS used to put on? They could do that now. Um, possibly people who have come to the conclusion that actually video conferencing really does work uh, and they can do it that way. Mm. So that's what I, I see happening, that we'll have a year at least ahead of us of, of change going slowly back to normal, but the new normal will be much more technological, which I'm looking forward to. And do you, uh, for both you actually, Jill and Graham, do you feel that there's a um, there's been a dramatic push to localisation now, isn't it? We're talking to our neighbours more. We're looking after our neighbours more. Neighbors We're doing things really on a, thing a much local, a much more local way. Do you think when this lockdown expires that we're going to see a retention of that? I mean, I'd certainly like to see that. I think I, that I, agree. I, th I think um, I've, I've sort of got to know a lot more people um, in the last few weeks than I knew before. Um, and I think sort of using all the different sort of uh, social media as well um, has sort of brought in different audiences. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, like you said earlier, getting more people of different generations involved um, would be a real positive uh, benefit to come from it all. Yeah. Michelle, what's next on your list? So, as you know, we're in a huge renewal season um, at the moment with lots and lots of councils renewals due on the 1st of June. So our primary uh, aim is to just keep engaging with those councils and keep them as clients. Um, getting new councils attracted to us is, is great. We've got lots of inquiries, but the challenge has been the decision making process. And I think the the good thing that will hopefully come out of this for, for me is moving councils forward in the ability to make a decision um, more quickly, um, but still engage at the right level. Um, also promoting the use of technology. So the asset register is, is a great example. That could mm. be stuff somebody's filing cabinet now in a, a locked council office somebody has a loss or needs to refer to it it's not on the cloud it's not there you, you, if you wanted a volunteer to go and do something in your parish um you can provide them with an interactive map of where all the equipment is that you might want them to inspect or put a notice on so i'm hoping that it will drive further use of a better use of technology uh, mm. in camp going forward um and yeah I, I just that community, bringing the community together um, in the hope that that sticks as well. Um, yeah. So lot, lots, lots to consider going forwards. Yeah. And Jonathan, we should wrap this up. The final word with, with you. What, what's next on your list? I think next on my list is to try to make sure that as, uh, as many people in government, 
as many MPs, as many civil servants understand what parish and town councils have been doing and their potential to support their communities. Because I think we've demonstrated again how really relevant we are after, you know, 100 plus years of, uh, of existence. And uh, I think this could provide a real opportunity to refresh the sector and see it uh, even more important in the future to help address crises like this, but also climate change and other things as well. So I think, um, uh, and with Graham, it's going to take a little while to get through this, but but hopefully we will get through it and we'll see things uh, improve uh, for the better with the use of new technology, with less driving and uh, transport and so forth, and, and more uh, communities supporting each other and neighbours supporting each other, which I think would be great. Yeah, brilliant. Great. Well, um, I think we should leave it there. We've all got things to do. Um, thank you very much for your time. Um, it was great to chat to you all hopefully we can do one of these again at some point with various different places on on screen but um yeah thanks very much and the the one problem i do have with these kind of things now is how you say goodbye on calls you can't just shake hands and and walk out the door you just have to quite crudely press a button and then you all disappear so i, sp <laughs> I suppose we all do that now um, but chris but first we should thank you chris for for um leading us through it all so 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 well it was um oh, did it really no. really brilliantly so so well done and I'm, it was nice to see colleagues as well and i'm sorry i i wasn't wasn't able to participate by yeah we would say it was lovely to see you, you. But, uh, we'll, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> maybe next time all right well, oh i've just discovered how to turn it on <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing we're all learning all right Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye-bye all.